Welcome to the IDP guy, soon to be IDP plus mock draft Monday show. This is our third in a series that we will be doing throughout throughout the off season. If you if you missed our previous ones, we had a four round offensive uh, mock draft. We had a four round IDP mock draft, and today we're going to bring those together with a combination eight round offense and IDP mock draft. To help me do that today is five incredible, talented gentlemen here, and we're going to let them introduce themselves to get the ball rolling. Well, one of them are saying that maybe there's not quite five, but we shall see that with me. And uh, we'll start off with uh, JJ. I guess I'm the weak link. I'd be the one that's not in that five. But uh, hey, I'm JJ Wenner. I'm happy to be here. Uh, used to host a podcast, might be hosting another one coming up soon. Love IDB Plus, love this entire crew. So I'm looking forward to testing myself in this mock today. Thank you, JJ. Okay, Johnny. What's up, guys? I'm Johnny Freaking Fantasy. You can find me on Twitter at, at Johnny Freaking F1. I was blessed enough to be on the last mock draft, and I'm ready to dive in today. Let's go. All right, sounds good. Joe. Hi, hi. Uh, Y'all are definitely part of the four or five talented staff members. I might be the weak link here, but um, yeah, I am Joseph Harlow. You can find me on Twitter at JoeLow63, um, where you can see my first official mock draft of 2024 that just released. Um, yeah, I was also on the last um, one of these mock draft shows, and it was a blast. Excited to do it again. Great. Right, thank you, Joe. And let's go to Will, also known as Skinny Chef. Hey, everybody. I'm Will. Um, missed the last mock draft. Excited to be here for this one. Expecting to get sniped at least several times today. So that'll be fun. I believe you can count on that, Will. And last but certainly not least, one of my cohorts from the weekly Start Sit show, Sean and Macaroni and Cheese today. I love <laughs> it, man. Sean. <laughs> Got to keep changing the names, right? Uh yeah, Sean Teague, at Sean 8386. Yeah, we had a blast last time doing this. You're going to love it, Will. And I think our audience will as well. And I I uh, didn't introduce myself, so I'm Ricky Roderick. I'm one of the co-owners at IDP Guys, soon to be IDP Plus. And you can find me at RickyRod66. So as I mentioned, today is going to be combined offense and IDP. We are going to do eight rounds worth. Um, and we're going to do 12 teams. So uh, these esteemed colleagues of mine will be uh, splitting up those 12 teams, as you'll see as we go through it. Um, and it, as I mentioned, we it is a redraft though format. So this is not a dynasty thought process. This will be redraft. From a scoring perspective, we're going to use the King's Classic scoring model. So for those in the audience that might not be familiar, every year in August, there's a fantasy football expo um, held in Canton, Ohio, the home of the NFL Hall of Fame, um, ran by Bob Lung, who's a terrific gentleman and does a great job with the Expo. So if you haven't been, I'd encourage you to go. It's a great time to meet a lot of great people. But typically, some of the best and brightest in the industry and knowledgeable uh, people that you may be familiar with, the Bob Harris's, the Jeff Ratcliffe's, the Jeff Manns, et cetera, have a number of um, leagues that are done for competition purposes that are drafted at the expo this past year was the first time they did a combined offense and idp league uh, which was called the uh, dick butkus division of the king's classic and idp uh, guys was uh, fortunate enough to be able to participate in that we finished third we plan on finishing first this coming year so um, but the scoring system is built for a five position scoring system for defense and there's individual scoring differences for each position. So tackles for defensive tackles gets propped up to make them more relevant. Similar for cornerbacks, whether it be tackles or interceptions. So it brings a lot of parity to the offense and defense. When you look at the total scores at the end of the year, of the top 100 scores, defensive players were slightly more than offensive players. So audience, as, you're, as we're going through this draft, you're going to see a lot of defensive players going earlier, and it is because of the scoring system, and, and it, will, it will bring a lot of balance to this draft. Okay, 
So with that, I think we are ready to go. And we're going to kick off this mock draft. And Will, Skinny Chef, will have the first pick of the third mock draft Monday of the offseason for the IDP guy slash IDP plus. Take it away, Will. So with this first pick, um, one thing that I've learned doing these mock drafts um, on the backside for us is that I hate the running backs as you get into rounds three, four, five, and six. It's just complete and other trash. As much as I love Justin Jefferson, CeeDee Lamb to me, he's always my first wide receiver pick, and even Jamar Chase here and there, I don't want to end up in the running back dead zone with a bunch of trash running backs. So I'm going to take the best running back in fantasy football, Christian McCaffrey. Christian McCaffrey goes with the first pick overall. Um, he also went with the first pick in our offensive mock draft um, that we did earlier. So no surprise here with that one. Okay, so pick number two, we are now going over to Mr. Macaroni and Cheese himself, Sean. Yeah, so uh, I'm thinking wide receiver here since it is PPR. And I'm a bit torn with the names that Will just mentioned, both of them, you know, Justin Jefferson or C.D. Lamb. I still like Jefferson. He, he's still my favorite. But the uncertainty at quarterback for now, anyways, has me leaning towards C.D. Lamb, <clears throat> who did have a breakout season, you know, career high, I think sixteen over 1,600 yards receiving, like 10 touchdowns. So let's we'll, we'll ride that hot hand and, and go with C.D. Lamb. C.D. Lamb of the Dallas Cowboys goes with pick number two. Okay, Mr. Harlow. Well, it's, this is very reminiscent of our offensive one last time where I sniped IDP Hunter on C.D. Lamb at two, and he took Justin Jefferson at three. Well, I'm going to take Justin Jefferson at three here. Um, best receiver in the game, was one of the top scorers even without, but even without playing in a big chunk of games. Yeah. Justin Jefferson, not much more as he said. Justin Jefferson of the Minnesota Vikings goes number three. Okay, and, and Joe is going to be one of our uh, drafters that will be drafting three teams, so he's going to have his hands full today. All right, next up, JJ. You know, I, I was going to start with my typical speech that I'm not a homer. Uh, I'm a Jets fan, and then go ahead and pick a Jet. But I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to pick somebody with some Jets. Uh, I'm going to go with Tyreek Hill. Uh, I think what we saw this year in that offense was pretty amazing. I, they're going to run it back next year. So I, I'm going to go with Tyreek Hill, PPR league, and looking forward to seeing what he can do in a, another year with Tua. Tyreek Hill at pick number four. Okay, Johnny freaking fantasy at number five. So I really like those first four picks. Um, I think they're pretty chalk. That's how I would, I'd roll two. Uh, JJ, you stole my pick with Tyreek there, so good pick to you. Um, if it's Dynasty, right, we're probably not considering him there. Maybe some other guys, but since it's redraft, great pick. I do agree they run it back next year. For me, I'm going to go with the bounce back guy here uh, with T. Higgins. A lot of people think he's uncertain to stay. He might get paid somewhere else. I think I'm going to go Jamar Chase here, Take the roll the dice on a nice bounce back year. I think in, in redraft and Dynasty, this is a, a great pick here. Jamar Chase, and of course, many of the folks, on, many of our drafters here know that I am an LSU loyalist, to say the least, and it's always lovely to see two LSU players go in the top five picks, and I'm sure we'll see many LSU players throughout the board as we move forward, and Joe might be referencing his Wyoming team here as we move forward as well. Okay, going on to team six, and we are back to Sean who is also drafting three teams today as well. Yeah, I was hoping to get Jabbar Chase here. <clears throat> it's a good pick, Johnny, excuse me. And uh, I think I'm going to go with the uh, the J.J. winner homer pick and uh, take Brees Hall. Should be getting Brees Aaron Hall. Rodgers back. And hopefully they'll improve that offensive line. If not, uh, we've, seen we could, we've seen what he could do with a bad offensive line, and that was pretty good. So. I think he's he's in the running for top running back this year. Yeah, I like what Joe wrote in his mock draft, uh, sending J.C. Latham there. We were talking a little bit about that 
prior to the mock. So hopefully that will help boost up Brees' numbers this year. Yeah, if you sure. haven't read Joe's mock, I highly encourage you to, to do that. Um, Joe, looks like you're about to say something too. Um, yeah, I was just going to bounce there. It's like, yep, yeah. uh, Jets need to bolster their O-line, yeah, whether it's Latham, Fuaga, or if Fashano or Alt Falls. Be huge for them, huge for Brees Hall, huge for Aaron Rodgers, Garrett Wilson, et cetera. But, yeah, take a look at that. I don't think it sucks too much. So I, um, I, ha I have I to admit – you are on the clock. So as, as you're contemplating that pick, I have to admit that Aaron Rodgers must be sitting there thinking the way Green Bay's O-line improved, the way all those rookies um, stepped up at wide receiver and tight end. And he's like, why did I force my way out of Green Bay? What was I thinking? No, he's too arrogant to do that, right? Okay, back to you, Joe. <laughs> so I was there between – so a little look behind the curtain. My next three were Jamar Chase, Brees Hall, so thank you for making my decision there. I will take Amon Ross St. Brown here. Nice. Take the top target on the Lions. Um, yeah, just top three in catches this year. And I don't remember where he finished in yards, but just great player. That offense has fed it to him. There's a chance Ben Johnson stays now, which has been a huge reason I've been down on uh, Amon Ra and Sam Laporta for Dynasty, but... We will see. He still probably goes to Washington, but there is a chance now that he stays, especially if they win this weekend or tomorrow, I guess. So a Monrata team seven and great pick. And that, that gentleman sure plays with a chip on his shoulder. That's for sure. Um, love the way he plays. Okay. JJ pick eight. Huh? I'm a little confused as where to go here. Um, there's a rookie, but I, I don't know if I want to, take a rookie right away. But you know what? It's a mock draft. I don't have to live with this team. Uh, I'm going to go with Marvin Harrison Jr. Um, Whoa. I mean, the top wide receiver prospect in the draft, according to Mary or somebody else. Uh, but it's really going to depend on where he lands, but he's definitely going to go to a place that's going to feed him the ball. So I'm looking forward to see what he can do in rookie year breakout. So when we do some of the recaps of the different rounds and all, I'm sure we'll have a lot of discussion on that pick. Marvin Harrison, first rookie in round one. That is a bold pick indeed at team with team eight. Okay, Will, team nine, you are up. I am so grateful for that bold pick um, because I had two players that I wanted to grab here. The first one being Amon Ross St. Brown. Um, and then I was really worried that you would go and snipe AJ Brown from me here. Um, he's had a Pretty solid season last year, and I don't expect anything to change for him. Um, so I'm going to go uh, A.J. Brown here with my first pick for my number 19. A.J. Brown of the Philadelphia Eagles. Okay. So um, that takes us into pick 10, and that takes us to Sean. And Sean is eating some macaroni and cheese right now, so we'll give him a second to swallow. And... Uh... <laughs> I didn't realize I was on mute either. So uh, there's that. Man, so I feel like all the the top tier receivers are gone. There's and Marvin Harrison. Of, and what was it? Yeah, and Marvin Harrison. Yeah. <laughs> and what was interesting, this is around the time at the Kings Classic draft that the defensive players started coming off the board. The other thing I didn't mention, that was a 14-team uh, draft as a side note. But even with that, or it was around the, the tail end, as we started to get to the tail end of round one is where the IDP players started coming off the board. It'd be interesting to see if that starts happening here or not. I'm not going that route just yet. I am going to move to a different position and take Travis Kelsey here. Uh, I do believe he's still the top tight end, especially in redraft. And he, you know, he didn't have as good of a season. He was banged up, injured, still phenomenal. We're seeing it in the playoffs. I mean, he's still that guy. So for as long as it's redraft and for as long as he's in the league, he is the top tight end. And that's who I'm choosing here. Travis Kelsey at pick 10. Okay. So interestingly enough, he went uh, late, uh, early third round, if I remember correctly, in our offensive mock draft. Very interesting. Okay. Team 11, and that'll be Joe. Yeah, so I took Kelsey at 2-11 last time in the mm -hmm. offensive one. But 
Interesting that Kelsey jumps back up to tight end one in this one after a very fun tight end one conversation for the offensive one. But last time here, I will go with the same player I took um, with my second team last time. I'm going to go B. John Robinson running back for the Falcons. I absolutely adore the Raheem Morris hire. I think that was one of the best hires they could have made. I think it was a right one. He's actually who I wanted the Colts to hire last offseason. Um, I'm a Colts fan, for those who don't know, but um, I'm happy with Steichen. But Morris is a great team builder. He knows where his bread is buttered, knows how to keep his guys happy, and gets the most out of his guys. He's not going to have a thing where Tyler Algier is out touching Bijan every other week. So this is really good for him. Now, as long as they get a quarterback, Bijan's going to jump maybe into the top four and redraft the set next year. Yeah. So the time of recording, uh, as we're doing this now, the rumor is that Zach Robinson is the leading candidate to be the offensive coordinator for the Falcons. It'll be interesting to see if it is him versus if someone else and what that might mean for Bijan's usage and so forth. But hopefully anybody that they put in would be smarter in terms of how they use Bijan and Drake and Pitts. But we shall see. Okay, round Colorado out round one legend, is Zach Robinson. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> and I think Oklahoma State, if I remember correctly, as a quarterback. Yep. Uh, Johnny Freaking Fantasy will round out uh, round one here with pick 12. So with this pick here, I'm going to kind of follow um, the last pick, follow suit, and I really like the Bijan Robinson. Um, but I like Jameer Gibbs here. Uh, I think even though it's not dynasty, you know, he might be a little bit, he, he's probably already taken in dynasty, you know, but this is a really sexy pick here. Uh, I think it really only gets better for Jameer Gibbs in his second year. I think the first year um, Detroit made a really good decision. They, they had um, Montgomery too. And they really want, I think they really wanted to say, you know, how much can we give Gibbs? They kind of teased us in the beginning, right? A lot of people were pissed off. They had Gibbs. They said, what's going on? This guy was supposed to be so good. Um, but I think lines were kind of just, they knew what they had, right? But they they wanted to see how many carries we can give him while at the same time I'm not not gassing him up all this year and um, going head, heavy metal to the pedal. So I think they did a nice job of breaking him in. I think um, now in the playoffs we see like what a walking bomb he is. Really one one carry, one catch can go 40, 60 yards to the house at any given time. So uh, I think he's kind of like you know you you look at the running back just by itself, the running game it, it's there. Then you look at the explosiveness, the catching ability, you know, that, that all is clicking. Um, if we like Johnson to, to come back, then I think we have to love Gibbs in this situation. So with my first pick here, 12th, I'm taking Gibbs. And I guess that means I go back to back, right? Mere Gibbs. Okay. So, our, yeah, and Johnny, let me recap round one for our listening audience real quick. So the first four picks in round one were Christian McCaffrey, C.D. Lamb, Justin Jefferson and Tyreek Hill. The middle four were Jamar Chase, Brees Hall, Amon Ross St. Brown, and Mr. Marvin Harrison Jr. And the back back half of round one was A.J. Brown, Travis Kelsey, B. John Robinson, and Jameer Gibbs. And I have to tell you to your comments, Johnny, I um, in the Warrior Bowl, I drafted B. John Robinson and Jameer Gibbs. So needless to say, my team started off rather slowly. Uh, the, unfortunately, their uh, increased use as the year progressed didn't quite get me to the playoffs. The only league I didn't make the playoffs was that Warrior Bowl. I blame Arthur Smith. Okay, so let's start round two. <laughs> a lot of people. And it do. is back to you, Johnny. And let, yeah, exactly. A lot of people lost a lot of uh, leagues because of Arthur Smith. So, Johnny, who are you going to pair, pair with uh, Jameer Gibbs with Team 12 as we start round two? You know, well, I got a, a lot of good choices here, and it's very tough at this spot. But uh, I'm going to kind of, like like uh, JJ said before, you don't have to live with this. It's a mock, so I'm going to have some fun with it. Um, so with my next pick here, I'm going to take a kind of a surprising pick, maybe with some of the guys left. I'm going to go with Michael Pittman here. Uh, I think Michael, Michael Pittman, Pittman, he's made that jump every year. He just keeps getting better. Uh, a fun fact about Michael Pittman is, He's played four seasons. In those four seasons, he's had seven different quarterbacks throw him the ball. And uh, I think we all like his stock, right? We say he keeps growing. He keeps getting better. So, um, and, and I'm not scared with Anthony Richardson. A lot of people are really high on him. Uh, I think he's a, a, a great prospect, you know, may, maybe a little bit of a project. But 
Uh, his prowess is still high. His potential is very high. With the first two games um, before Richardson got hurt, you know, I'm looking back in the in the history here. Uh, the first game, Michael Pittman had 11 targets, eight catches, 97 yards, and a touchdown. That's with Richardson. Uh, week two, 12 targets, eight catches, 56 yards. You know, and there was some injury there with Richardson and uh, inconsistency from there on, you know, for for him when he did come back. Um, but at the same time, no matter who what, who it was, Gardner Minshew, Richardson, Pittman was the guy. And if you really watched his his uh, him playing, you really have to like if you're a kid, man, what a fun time it is to watch Michael Pittman in Indianapolis because he's a stud. He goes up and gets the ball. I mean, I've seen him smacked a couple of times. He just gets up and keeps going. So I really like Michael Pittman. I don't think they let him go in Indianapolis. They know what they have. And he's really eager um, to resign with them. So I think it does happen. And I think this is a safe pick here for me. Okay, Pittman is yeah. starting off round two. And, uh, of course, Pittman, one of uh, several key free agents at wide receiver, including Mike Evans and T. Higgins. So it'll be interesting to see where some of these other free agents go. Okay, Team 11 with Joe. And who you're pairing with Bijan? So first, got to say, love that pick, Michael Pittman. It's a fun one. I don't think the seven quarterbacks in four years is a very fun fact, but, you know, that's all right. Also have to just bounce off Anthony Richardson, the – flaws in his prospect profile I think were super overblown for some pretty obvious reasons why they were overblown but yeah he's a very good prospect he's not just a run first type of guy he is very good reader of the defense accurate not super accurate but not as inaccurate as was thought it's a good pick I think it's fun and yeah he showed out even with the Gardner Minshew so if he gets a top tier quarterback back appreciate that Jim yeah for sure um, here, I'm going to break the IDP seal. We're going to go with Max Crosby. Why? Looking at last year's scoring Bad for Max. the Kings, yep, Kings Classic, he finished eighth in points per game. So pretty fun there. And like has been said, it's a mock. Let's see what happens. Mad Max. So the IDP seal is broken with Joe Harlow and Team 11. Okay, let's go to Team 10 and Sean. Yeah, so uh, thanks, Joe. That's who I was going to take here. You're welcome. Yeah, so yay. <laughs> Sniped again. And so, well, I guess who is, who is guess Sean I got to pair with Travis Kelsey. Yeah, so I think we're still going to stay in the AFC. And we are going to go edge rusher here. And if Max Crosby's gone, I guess the next best thing is uh, Mr. TJ Watt. Dude's been phenomenal. I'm sure, he gets injured. He might miss a few games, but while he's there, he's going to give Watt. you elite production. Okay, Sean is uh, uh, working his way with some of the more elder statement with uh, Travis Kelsey at tight end and T.J. Watt approaching thirty. But uh, he's got a strong. This is a redraft, so uh, great two great picks there. Okay, Team 9, we are moving over to Will, who's got A.J. Brown as his first pick. Who is he going to pair with A.J.? This is one QB, right? Yeah. That is correct. It is one QB. I did not mention that earlier in the show, but that's a great clarification. Man, this starting to get to that stretch now. We got some IDPs going off the board where it really you have to really start thinking about what I'm going to do here. Um, I was really hoping Max Crosby was going to make it to me here at nine. That would have for sure been my pick, but clearly he wouldn't have made it that far, even if he hadn't gotten picked at two, two. So that breaks my heart a little bit. Um, I think there's one player in particular that I was really wanting to see make it to me. Um, we haven't had a whole lot of running backs come off the board and there's one specific running back that I'm really excited about for next season, the way he finished out this year. He is the zombie, not zombie man, Isaiah Pacheco. He has been lights out on fire for his for the Chiefs to finish out the season, and I expect him to continue that next year. So I will go ahead and pair Isaiah Pacheco with A.J. Brown. Isaiah Pacheco. Okay, and if I remember correctly, Pacheco had 42 catches during the regular season, which was a big jump from the year before, which adds to his value for sure. Okay, Team 8, we're going back to J.J., who made the most interesting pick of the first round, going rookie Marvin Harrison. Let's see who he's going to pair with his teammate and if he's going to make this as interesting team or, or he's going to go in a different direction. Well, if this is going to be a team that I – this is going to be my atypical drafting team. Uh, I figure with the fourth pick, 
I'm just going to go with what I would normally do. Uh, I'm going to go with a Foye Oluokan here, um, who I think is probably going to be the, uh, I mean, just repeat, that guy puts up a ton of points. Last year, he was in the top five of the Butkus scoring. Um, so I'm just going to lock down my linebacker and I hope that he can repeat in that Jacksonville defense, which I hopefully will improve next year and he'll see a little bit more uh, production. So I'm going with Foye Oluokan. Put it on the board. Oluokan in the linebacker seal is now broken. I like breaking seals. Yeah. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> okay. Joe at Team 7 and Amon Ra. <sighs> so this is a tough one. I have a bunch of names on here that I expected at least a couple to go. So thanks, you guys, for not making my decision easier. But... Mm -hmm. That means we're doing terrible at drafting, right? <laughs> no, it doesn't. It does not at all. Probably means I had these guys way too high. But <laughs> I am going to go with just, of this group, my favorite player on the list, someone I have ranked super high for Dynasty, but has some quarterback issues. And I'm going to go Chris Olave. I think he is absolutely incredible receiver. Sorry, JJ, he should have been Rookie of the Year two years ago. But... um. In my opinion, I very much think he should have been. But still, they're both very good, him and another receiver who will be named soon, I'm sure. But, yeah, Olave, clear number one target on the team, uh, was really showing out at the end of the year. Derek Clark was throwing some decent passes and was throwing a lot more as they were struggling and trying to make that final playoff push. So, yeah, I think he is going to have a very, very strong season. Hopefully they funnel him more targets and don't do the weird thing at the beginning of the year where they just kind of forgot about him. So, yeah. And he jumped, I think, to 87 catches well, this year. Something like that. Yeah, that is correct. And at, at press time, as we're doing this, the Saints don't have their offensive coordinator yet. They did um, release Pete Carmichael, who had been riding off of Sean Payton's coattail for so long, and we'll see who they come up with that might make even better use of Olave, says a bitter Saints fan. Okay, with that, we will move to Team 6 in Sean. And who is he going to pair with Brees Hall? So I think we're going to stick with offense here and go with rookie. Well, he's not a rookie now, but he was a rookie this past year. 1,400 yards, five touchdowns, and Matthew Stafford's new favorite target, target Puka Nakua. Puka Nakua to pair with Brees Hall in Team 6. It'll be interesting to see where Cooper Cup now goes in, in this draft. In our previous one, Puka went late first, and Cooper went um, early third, so it'll be really interesting to see here. Okay. Going to team five and Johnny freaking fantasy. Who are you going to pair with Jamar chase? So I had two choices here. Um, fortunately, Sean made it easier on me. He took one of them out. So this is, I'm pretty, I'm confident with this pick now. You know, I think I got it. I'm going to go with DJ Moore here. Um, very yeah. similar to my Michael Pittman of my last team. I drafted somebody who's just been getting better and better each year. Um, and, and with that said, I'll, I'll give his flowers where they're due here. He actually had his career year this year, uh, first year in Chicago. He set his career highs in receptions with 96, yards with 1364, and touchdowns with eight. Uh, and, and if you remember that one game versus Washington, it, it was eight catches, 250, and three touchdowns. So another walking bomb play here. Uh, I think, you know, DJ Moore, he's only 26 right now. He's going to be 27 going into the next year, um, even sexier in Dynasty. But I, I really think it. I'd like to see Justin Fields get re-signed there. Uh, but to me, you know, like we, we said with Pittman, it doesn't matter who's throwing him the ball. Uh, he's a walking bomb at any time. So um, I'd like to see Justin Fields stay. That makes me more confident in this pick. But, um, you know, it could, could get better, could get worse. So I'm, I'm willing to roll the dice with um, – his, his prowess, his track record here. I think DJ Moore and Jamar Chase, you know, are very bankable plays. 
Um, I'm not trying to take a risk here in the first two rounds, first, you know, specifically two rounds. So I think I did a good job of playing safe here with two great wide receivers. Okay, we got Jamar Chase and DJ Moore to team five, and we're going to JJ with team four. And who's going to pair, uh, pair with Tyreek? Well, I was going to pair him with DJ Moore, uh, but that didn't. The best laid plans of mice and men, as they say. Uh, so I'm going to go IDP again. Um, I'm torn right now between two players. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to go linebacker or if I'm going to go with another edge rusher. I think I'm going to lean edge just because of the sack scoring. And I'm going to go with my first pick from the IDP mock we did uh, a week ago. I'm going to go with Miles Garrett. Uh, Miles Garrett. I think we're going to see his performance uh, level out. He had some up and down weeks. I know that's what you get from edges. But I like how that defensive line was playing, especially down the stretch. So I'm going to go with Miles Garrett. Miles Garrett, Jim's short scheme will be back. Some of their injured players will be back. Excellent pick there. Okay. Team three, Joe with, uh, with JJ, Justin Jefferson as his first one. Yep. Uh, Miles Garrett would have been my pick there. So we are going to pivot. And I'm going to go with a player who was a surprise first rounder in their last offensive mock, Nico Collins. Um, I think I was the only other one who also thought of him as a first rounder at that point, but um, yeah, CJ Stroud's top target. He showed out a lot, showed all the potential he does have, uh, large athletic, and as long as he stays healthy, he should be very good top 12, top 10, hopefully receiver. All right. Nico win at 1.12, surprisingly, in our offensive mock draft at Joe's Point. And we did a, a panel vote, um, and two voted for thinking he should be a first rounder and four picking more of a second rounder. So we'll, we may discuss that a little bit later as well. Okay, team two with Sean coming up, and CeeDee Lamb was his first pick for this team. That was a great pick, Joe. Uh, Nico's Thank the man. <laughs> he really is. Yeah. For our listening audience, guess who may have picked him in the first round in our previous mock draft? Just saying. it, yeah, it <laughs> may or may not have been me. Definitely leaned towards me, but yeah. So uh, Nico was somebody I was looking at for this pick as well. Uh, so Joe, help me out here. Uh, I'm also going to go wide receiver. Uh, this guy had 1,300 yards, seven touchdowns last year, and I mean he's. He's probably looked at as the second wide receiver on his team. Uh, Brendan Ayuk, but I think he has a uh, a great rapport with uh, Brock Purdy here, and he's the one that can stay on the field more. So uh, I do I do like what they're doing with Brendan Ayuk. I know Debo is there, and he probably gets the bigger plays, gets more of the rushing attempts and all as well, but. For consistency and stay production, it's Brandon for me. Brandon Ayuk. And over to Will for the final pick of round two. With the final pick of round two, I'm going to draft the Houston Texans' real number one wide receiver who was lost to a broken fibula this season, which is going to be not a big deal for the return. I am going to take Tank Dell. Of his last five games before he got injured, which are the five after the bye week, three of those were were wide receiver one finishes, including the wide receiver one overall and three overall. So I am down with the real wide receiver one for the Houston Texans. Very interesting. So Tank Dell rounds out round two. And so let's recap for the listening audience. The first four picks of round two went Michael Pittman, Max Crosby, TJ White, excuse me, TJ Watt and Isaiah Pacheco. Your middle four were Foye Aluakon, Foye Aluakon, Chris Olave, Puka Nakua, and DJ Moore. And rounding out the round two, the next four were Miles, excuse me, rounding out round two with the final four. Wow, Miles Garrett, Nico Collins, Brandon Ayuk, and Tank Dell. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about a, a few of these picks and so forth. And let's, Start off with 
the Marvin Harrison pick. Uh, rookie obviously going very early. In I went away for a second, sorry. And our offensive mic draft, actually, that went four rounds. No one had picked Marvin Harrison. So, Joe, thoughts on uh, the Marvin Harrison pick? I absolutely love that. If rookies are involved here, then, yeah, I absolutely think he should be a first-round pick. Uh, best prospect and a better prospect than Jamar Chase, who was the best prospect since, I don't know, a long a while. But he's the real deal. He's my number one overall rookie right now, regardless of position. And, yeah, I think I totally get it, assuming he doesn't go to a place that really sucks for him. But, honestly, even if he ends up with the Patriots and they bring in Jacoby oh. back, yeah, if they bring Jacoby Brissett in and have Marvin Harrison, I still think he's probably a first-round player for redraft. Maybe closer to 12 than 8, but, yeah, it's bold, but I like it. All right, JJ, a, a vote of confidence for you, Marvin Harrison pick there. What do you thought of Travis Kelsey, JJ, in the first round? A little bit too rich for your blood, or you think that's about right compared to the previous mock, as Joe called out, it was actually the late second round where he went. I mean, if Kelsey has an, uh, less injuries, he's right back where he's supposed to be, right? We're hoping that Kansas City adds a wide receiver so they have somebody to help catch the ball. I mean, Rishi Rice has sort of picked it up down the stretch, but you had another wide receiver there, and now Kelsey's going to be back, right back where he was, um, as long as he keeps playing. We'll see. All right. Okay, and we did a couple of polls in, in our offensive mock draft last time. We're going to do another one here, and Joe and Will aren't allowed to vote on this one. So the vote is, who is the number one wide receiver in Houston this coming year? Nico or, or Tank? We'll start with Sean. I'm going with Nico here. Okay, Will is giving you the thumbs down. Okay, but we got one <laughs> vote for Nico there. Okay, Johnny. Man, Tank or Nico? I'm torn with this. One. I think it goes both ways. I mean, I think it's similar to like an IUK and Debo type of thing. <clears throat> Like, you know, we can claim one to be the number one, but um, there's games that fluctuates, right? So I think it's the same thing. If I'm talking PPR, who I think has most catches, I think that's Collins. But uh, I do think that Dell's a great home run hitter. Um, you know, he's he could be. All right, Johnny, you got to vote. You got to you got to pick one. Which one? <laughs> I'm saying I'm not, I'm not letting you waffle on this one. <laughs> bank, I, I'll say more bankable Nico Collins. Okay, we got Nico and JJ. Okay, one they more. Say, they say size doesn't matter, but we all know they're lying. I'm going to go with Nico Collins. <laughs> all right, so Nico. So um, t I think everybody agrees Tank's a great pick, but I don't know, Will, if everybody agrees with you on the uh, – he's the number one there. Will That's wants to okay. make a counterpoint before we start round three. That's okay. <laughs> I'm fine being the only one right in this situation. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Great response. Uh, Will, I love it. Will, Will is going to go and be checking out the futures and placing a bet on Tank Dell here right after the show. Okay, we're going to start round three now. And um, it is back to Will. And this first team had Christian McCaffrey and Tank Dell, as we just talked about. Now, it'll be interesting. I, I'm expecting to see a little bit more run of defensive players now. And once again, as we talked about in previous mock drafts, mock draft Mondays, that drafts that we did, Always knowing your scoring system is key right now. And there's actually several defensive players that are still on the board that are actually going to outscore some of the offensive players that have actually been drafted already. So we'll see where we go here, and we will turn it over to Will as we start round three. Yeah, so you, you are right. There are a lot of defensive players still on the board. They're going to outscore this guy that I'm probably picking here. Um, but like I said, when I started with the number one pick, there is a running back dead zone of garbage running backs, and I don't want to get stuck there. Um, you know, Derrick Henry has fallen into that zone to me, Austin Eckler, even Saquon Barkley to me, and I know a lot of people are really high on him. I just don't like the situation there with the Giants, even if he's still there next season. Um, but there is one running back that I think the team is finally figuring out how to utilize running backs. He actually scored higher than Isaiah Pacheco last year in the um, – 
that league, uh, what was that league called? Holy cow, the Dick Buckus League. Um, and that is James Cook for me. I think that the Buffalo Bills are going to have to lean on James Cook a little bit more next year. We don't know where we're at with uh, Stephon Diggs and what he's going to do this offseason. He seems to be perennially disgruntled and ready to leave at any moment. Um, and then you have the young up, up and coming Dalton Kincaid. Other than that, I don't, there's not a lot of solid options there in Buffalo for next season. And I think James Cook is going to be another strong running back option. James Cook, another team, will they hi hire Joe Brady as their permanent offensive coordinator after they fired Ken Dorsey and Brady was the interim uh, mm -hmm. OC? Will they bring in someone else? Gabe Davis is a free agent. Diggs is questionable as we move forward. So interesting call out by um, Will there. Okay, James Cook. All right, let's go to Sean with team two. And with who's he going to pair with C.D. Lamb and Brandon Ayuk? Yeah, so there is a lot of IDP still out there, like a lot. And this team is pretty confident. We can uh, we can find some pretty good value later on. So we're going to stick with offense here. I'm still a bit torn on this pick. I'm looking at a running back or a wide receiver. This is PPR. Um Man, there's still quite a few good receivers out there, too. So I, th I think this team is going to pivot to running back. And this guy, you know, he did, had a fair amount of catches. I think 50-some, 50, 50 over 400 yards receiving, plus I think just under 1,000 yards. And I, I'm looking at Travis Etienne here. I think he is the focal point of that Jaguars team. And we can count on him to be on the field. He doesn't have any real competition uh, committee wise with a, uh, you know, Bigsby or Ernest. Yeah. Dear Ernest Johnson. So uh, I think it's his backfield. Yep. And Dear Ernest Johnson is a free agent uh, going into the off season here as well. So Travis Etienne with team two. Okay. Team three, Joe is up. He's got Justin Jefferson and apparently the number one wide receiver in Houston, Nico Collins. And let's see who he will pair with those, those two. Yeah, by popular vote. Some, apparently. <laughs> so I'm going to stick in the AFC South here and go with a running back who I am personally a tad lower on than consensus, but has the potential to be the overall RB1 or two in the PPR, I guess. Um, Jonathan Taylor. Let's see if he really does get unlocked with Anthony Richardson, year, his first full offseason in year with Shane Steichen. Um, not a huge pass catching threat, which does suck for PPR, but as we saw two years ago with a very subpar offense overall, and he was dominating. So in the third round, I will take that upside shot. Jonathan Taylor of the Colts with um, third pick of round three. Okay, we're over to JJ, who um, with I believe both of his teams has an offensive and a defensive player. So um, he is zigging while others are he's zagging while others zig and so let's see what he does with team four to pair with Tyreek and Miles Garrett you know I'm looking at a bunch of different players the main guy I was going to uh, take is Travis Etienne thanks Sean um jerk so I guess I'm gonna <laughs> that would have been a really good pick thank you thank you I, I would have really liked that pick um Man, I know I said this is the team where I'm going to do like sane things, right? This isn't my reach team. I'm going to go with the tight end one from our uh, first mock draft Monday. Uh, and I'm going to go with Sam Laporta. Um, Sam Laporta. I, I love what they're doing in Detroit. Uh, he seems like that same idea of Travis Kelsey where – He's getting peppered with a ton of targets. Him and Amon Ra are like driving that offense. So I'm going to go with Sam Laporta, even though it's not a tight end premium league. And maybe this is a little bit more like dynasty minded, but I'm always dynasty minded. But I'm going to stick with Sam Laporta. Tight Sam end Laporta, Detroit. Detroit Lions, who hope to make their first Super Bowl. We shall see. Team five, we have... Johnny up. Man, very tough spot for me here. A couple of things, a couple of moving parts. Uh, Jonathan Taylor really liked that pick. Etienne definitely deserved to go earlier. Um, Cook would have been a good pick for me here. I was going to buy myself some time and take Laporta. He's gone. Wow. So you caught me at a good and bad time here. Um, 
I think for me, you know, people might not like this pick, but I think uh, especially in redraft, it's a safer pick, I think, than Dynasty. But um, with how limited it is at running back, give me Kyron Williams here. Um, I do have hesitations about him, uh, especially in Dynasty. But in redraft, I think he's a little bit safer. Um, the, you know, the the usage percentage is off the roof with – Kyron Williams, you know, we do have a bad taste in our mouth recently in L.A. with uh, Cam Akers. You know, he's kind of fizzled. Um, that kind of does scare me. But if he does pay off here in the third round, uh, if he puts numbers up close to even what he did this year and stays healthy, uh, he'll be worth my while here. So I can't let Kyron Williams fall anymore, especially when uh, positions are getting thin here. I think he's still good value on the board. Kyron Williams goes with, with to team five to Johnny. And that's one I have to admit, I thought uh, would go a little sooner. And we'll talk about that uh, a little bit later here. So team six and Sean with Brees Hall and Puka Nakua. We're going to stick with the young, younger guys theme here. And uh, we're going to go with the number two guy on the Dolphins and take Mr. Jalen Waddle who uh, judged by some reaction there. I think Mr. Harlow was about to take him. <laughs> so take that. Yep, you got me. That makes me feel even better about the pick. <laughs> Lo and love the penguin waddle dance that he does. <laughs> Not the duck one. <laughs> yes, yeah. Let's clarify that. For yeah. some strange reason, yes. It, it was a penguin. Okay. Wado. Okay, now on to the second half of round three, and we have Joe with team seven, and he started off uh, with two wide receivers, Amon Ra and Chris Olave. Yep, and was very much wanting to make it a third wide receiver there, but ah, that's all right. So looking at my queue right now, I have mostly IDPs at the top of it, but... There is another receiver who, you know what? We're going to pivot to another receiver here. One who won an award over Chris Olave, who shouldn't you? have. <laughs> I'm going to take JJ's Do it. teammate, uh, Garrett Wilson, here. I have not Garrett been the biggest Garrett Wilson fan at any point. I think he was an overrated prospect. Still think I don't think he's overrated anymore. But last year, Dynasty Redraft thought he was massively overrated. But third, middle of the third round for what I have always said was great elite upside. I think that's a home run pick at this point. And loving this wide receiver room here. So Garrett Wilson apparently uh, with this pick of Joe and JJ who has the next pick, it looks like he may have just sniped him from what I picked up. So um, while JJ's thinking about what he might want to have as a replacement pick, we'll tell you. So Garrett Wilson is the same age and uh, played at the rival school of my son Andrew, who is sitting to my side producing and, and adding to the scoreboard. So thank you, Andrew, for doing that. And in eighth grade, we watched Garrett Wilson slam dunk right over one of Andrew's teammates in eighth grade in middle school. So back then, you could tell he was a special athlete for sure, wow. um, particularly when he jumped over the kid's head. It was quite impressive. OK, with that story, uh, JJ, hopefully I gave you a chance to think about who you might pick after you. I think you. No, you got no, there. you did it. You did it. <laughs> of course you did it. Uh, do, do we have a bleep button? Uh, no, okay. I do not have a bleep button, unfortunately. All right. So, first of all, don't tell stories about Garrett Wilson after he just got sniped from me. I don't want to hear how. <laughs> like, I already wrote down. Mention Harlow. Mention his BS Olave story. Should have won because he didn't. Garrett <laughs> Wilson did. Garrett Wilson should be on my team. I'm so mad right now. Like but he's angry. Not. <laughs> he's not. He's not. So. I'm on tilt, as the poker players would say. So I am going to draft another. I'm, I'm going to kick open the door again, right? I'm breaking the seal, and I'm going to take my least favorite player at this position. I hate this dude. From every ounce of my core, I hate this player. And it's I Nick Sirianni. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's my most hated coach. No, I, gonna, I was close. I'm going to take quarterback for the Buffalo Bills, Josh freaking Allen. 
Go I Pokes. hate him. He's a baby. He acts like he's the biggest tough guy in the world when he's trucking guys. But then he likes to play like, oh, I'm an innocent QB. Nobody can hit me. Pick a lane and stick in it. Like he's always up. Oh, fake and sliding and then going extra. He plays on the refs to like pamper him, but he doesn't deserve to be pampered. Sorry. Josh Allen is my pick and I'm angry and I'm going to go on mute right now so I can curse in the background. Well, I, I want to thank Joe for sniping JJ because that was quite entertaining. And we got a lot out of that one. So thank you, JJ, for sniping him. And for those that are in our listening audience, he is on mute in I, if I'm a good lip reader, it's a good thing he's on mute. <laughs> okay, better. let's go to T. You're better now. Okay, good. Um, let's go to Will with Team Nine. Will. So Team Nine's feeling really frustrated. Um, last round, he was hoping Max Crosby would fall to him and didn't at both spots. And then this round, he was hoping to get Garrett Wilson here, and there's no way he was going to make it past the two guys ahead of him. So Team Nine, although less raging, um than jj is also on tilt right now and i think oh yeah there's a defensive end that is super quiet um but is continually a top player that i think i'm gonna grab here uh hold on i'm gonna pull these numbers up real quick and make sure that i'm correct yeah, we are going to snatch up Daniil Hunter here. Um, Daniil he Hunter. Continually seems to be drafted too late for the production that he gives. And I don't want Team 9 to miss out on him again, as Team 9 has so far Max Crosby and Garrett Wilson. So Team 9 picks Daniil Hunter, LSU star, to go along with A.J. Brown and Isaiah Pacheco. Okay, um, and Daniel's a free agent, so it'll be interesting to, see, interesting to see if he stays with the Vikings and stays in the floor system, but he's been productive in multiple systems, whether it be a 3-4-4-3. Okay, Team 10 is up. Sean is up. He's got Kelsey and TJ Watt, and who is he going to pair with those two? Yeah, so I, I really like Will's pick because Hunter is consistently undervalued in almost every draft, and my favorite thing about IDP is the fact that I can load up on linebackers and circle back and get a guy like Daniel Hunter because he is overlooked. It's, it's always, you know, the, the top guy, the top five are usually all the same. So great pick. Uh, I love seeing him get his, uh, his due here. So, uh, but for my team, I'm going to stick with the old guy theme and go with another, well, this team don't have a wide receiver. So we're taking our first wide receiver on this team, going with a guy who, I think I said it in the last one. All he does is catch touchdowns. All he does is get a thousand yards receiving Mr. Mike Evans, regardless of who his quarterback is, he produces and he's had some bad ones. So Baker Mayfield probably going to stick around and he's just going to keep him peppered as long as he's there. So that was one of the ones we mentioned earlier that it's a free agent. Tampa Bay, I know, wants to keep him. And if Baker stays there, he wants to stay there. The Houston Texans, and he's from the Galveston, Texan area, right side of Houston. It'd be interesting to see if they try and take a stab with him and really make that a Nico Tank Dell and Mike <laughs> Evans trifecta, which could be really interesting. But uh, Mike Evans. So Team 10 is going to be ordering Geritol by the case for that older team. And uh, let's go to Team 11. Now, I don't know if everybody knows what Geritol is. I think most people do, but I hope you all get the joke. Okay. Team 11, Joe is up with Bijan and Max Crosby. So here I was between two older wide receivers. Mike Evans was one of them. Great pick, Sean. Um, also, great pick, JJ, with a highly talented quarterback. Great for fantasy. <laughs> but, and from a great university. So Yes. And he was the number two scorer in uh, yeah. the Buckus division. So. Yes, but yes. Um, so I'm going to take another older receiver, sticking with the same team as my last pick for this team. Um, Devontae Adams went in the fourth round of our offensive draft, but no matter the quarterback he has, he continues to produce over the last two seasons with Derek Carr, Jimmy G, Aiden O'Connell has 
355 targets, if I'm doing math correctly, which it should be. Um, yeah, so 180 two years ago, 175 targets this year. He is on the down or decline, but right now he's still a great option. Clear number one. Hopefully we see those touchdowns get closer to double digits than eight they were at this year. So hopefully they get a Justin Fields, uh, Kirk Cousins, even a Russell Wilson, someone a little bit of an upgrade. Two Raiders on Team 11 would be John Max and Devontae Adams. Okay, it'll be interesting to see who's thrown the ball to Devontae. Will it be O'Connell? Will it be Garoppolo? Not likely. Will it be a rookie? We shall see. Okay, Team 12. Johnny will wrap up round three, then we'll recap round three. So for this one, I'm glad he fell to me. Uh, I think it's a great pick here. I'm going to go with it. I have a running back already, but I'm going to nab another one here, make it tougher for everybody else. I'm going to go with Rashad White, who had a top five running back finish this year. Um, you know, it, this is to me a safer pick in, in redraft than Dynasty. Uh, I, I do think, you know, they bring back Baker Mayfield for at least another year. They try to keep what's going um, going on, trying to keep a status quo there in Tampa Bay. Uh, maybe it's a down year, you know, kind of running back five. Maybe he's due to some regression. You know, you, you had uh, Moster right behind him who didn't finish the, the last game. Maybe he gets, you know, a couple um, fluff points there and passes him up. Kyron, you know, if he stays healthy, he probably outscores him. Um, and Jameer Gibbs, if he doesn't start out slow, Bijan and him don't start out slow, maybe they outproduce him too. Um, so I do think there's some some regression there for Rashad White, but uh, if a top five running back who's not old, you know, who's kind of just gotten maybe better, you know, this year, uh, who maybe has figured it out, doesn't have competition right now for touches. Uh, I like the system he's in, and I, I do think, you know, he's not the, the best prospect and not going to hit many home runs, but safe pick here, Rashad White. Rashad White goes to team 12. So let's go ahead and uh, recap round three. The first four picks were James Cook. Travis Etienne, Jonathan Taylor, and Sam Laporta. The next four picks, Kyron Williams, Jalen Waddle, Garrett Wilson, which caused a little bit of consternation for one of our panelists, and Josh Allen, which really put one of our panelists in tilt. And then finally, the la final four, Daniil Hunter, Mike Evans, Devontae Adams, and Rashad White. Okay, so we're through three rounds of our eight rounds so far. And gentlemen, so to pick up the pace, particularly for our audience, we're going to ask maybe we keep the descriptions a little bit shorter here as we go through into the next round. And uh, John, we will start with you with uh, here with uh, pick one of round four. So who are you going to pair with Gibbs, White, and Pittman? Uh, so there's a lot of great uh, quarterbacks still on the board, but I think I'm going to go with a, a tight end here. I'm going to take Trey McBride with this pick. Um, I, I couldn't get the first two. That's okay. I, I really like Trey McBride um, upcoming year. So I, I'm not, I'm not going to pass up a tight end here. I'm at least going to get that off the board. Give me Trey McBride. Trey McBride like goes with pick one around four. You get the macaroni and cheese seal of approval on that one. Okay. Team 11, Joe. So I'm also looking at a tight end here, but unsure if I want – you know what? Screw it. We're going to go with them. TJ Hawkinson. He's injured right now, but I think he is the top tight end and will be the top tight end on a points per game basis when he does return. He was, in for the Kings scoring this year, he was just under Travis Kelsey in points per game, like 0. 0.2 under. So, yeah. I'm going to take him in the Hawkinson. Fourth. Late season knee injury, a little bit of a risk there, but could could pay off as, as he slipped a little bit as a result of that injury. Very interesting. Okay. Team 10 is Sean, and he will be going with his Geritol team so far of Travis Kelsey, TJ Watt, and Mike Evans. Yeah, so uh, after seeing McBride go, Hawkinson was going to be my pick here. Uh, so good pick, both of you guys. Uh, so to keep it in the AARP lane, I'm going to pivot to wide receiver Keenan Allen. Keenan Allen, an appropriate fit for this team. We uh, may need to get a social security and Medicare spokesperson to talk with this team at some point as well. In addition <laughs> to a financial planner. Okay. Keenan Allen, uh, to go with Mike Evans, TJ White and Kelsey. Okay. Team nine will. 
And Will will be adding to A.J. Brown, Isaiah Pacheco, and Daniil Hunter. So there's one, um, one more geriatric player out there that I am honestly pretty surprised he's made it this far. His uh, counterpart went way earlier than I thought he would. But I'm going to go ahead and take Mr. Cooper Cup, an excellent route runner who should be able to maintain his numbers for at least one more season. Cooper Cup goes to Team 9. Okay, Team 8. JJ's up. Hopefully JJ's recovered. I saw him doing some Zen moments as well. And I did. I'm all about Namaste, Harrison. Ricky. Namaste, my <laughs> friend. I'm going to actually <laughs> stick with my last pick and just keep going. I'm taking the other Josh Allen. Um, I mean, that way I only have to cheer for one name. It's easy when you get old and start taking Geritol to make it simple for yourself. So I'm taking Josh Allen from Jacksonville, defensive end. And I like Josh this stuff, Allen. Yeah. <laughs> I was about I was about to ask you that question if you if you like this one compared to the previous one. I do. I okay. do. So Josh Allen is a free agent. I'm sure Jacksonville is going to do everything they can to keep him. Their GM has said as such, so that might mean franchise tag. But you've got two Jags with uh, not just another guy, but Jaguars with Josh Allen and Foye Aluakon on this team to go with Marvin Harrison and JJ's hated other Josh Allen of the Buffalo Bills. <laughs> okay, Team 7, Joe. He's gone three wide receivers to start this draft. Of course, this is offense and IDP. It'll be interesting to see if uh, he makes a turn here with Amon Ra, Olave, and Garrett Wilson. Who will he pair with them? I am making a turn to the defensive side of the ball. Maybe a bit of a surprise pick here, but I'm going with my top dynasty linebacker, a guy I think is the top five redraft linebacker, and that is Ernest Jones. Finished as a top 24 overall player in King scoring, and yeah, I think he has massive upside and is just going to keep growing as a player. Ernest Jones from the Rams. Very interesting pick there. And they, and of course, will now have a – They will uh, – interestingly enough, they'll have a new defensive coordinator. Hopefully that won't impact the usage and in, in, in the scheme and so forth. That could impact his numbers. Fingers crossed on that. But um, Ernest Jones goes there with Team 7. Team 6, Sean is up, and he's also going all offense so far in this team with Brees and Puka and Jalen. Will he start making the uh, – the pivot towards IDP or not? Not this round. We're going to stick with young guys and young wide receiver who I'm a little surprised still here. Not real surprised, but a little bit. And that's DK Metcalf. DK home Metcalf. Run threat. And also one of the leaders in end zone targets as well. So DK Metcalf at team six. Okay, team five. Jamar Chase, DJ Moore, Kyron Williams. Who will they be pairing with that? And they being Johnny on this one. So I hate to do it. Uh, I'm still going to fade IDP right now because there's some some great players on the board. One of them being, I hate to take another wide receiver, but he's still here. Give me Debo Samuel here. Um, Debo Samuel, such oh. an effective player. We talked about Ayuk, who went you know two two rounds before. Maybe they're. Uh, up in the air about who's the real one there. But to me, it doesn't matter. This offense is so fluid. I don't think it's going anywhere. Um, Debo Samuel, he's not, you know, 32 hanging on by a thread. He's still pretty young. He's very efficient, just how he plays, gets a lot of touchdowns. He doesn't need a lot of catches to get his value, uh, especially because he gets rushing yards too, rushing attempts. And um, I think it's a safe pick here. I expect him to be great for another at least two or three years. So, um, in a system in a, in a team that I don't think much has changed, and I think they're youthful to be great for the next five, ten years, I, I think uh, Debo Samuel is worth my while here. Okay, Debo to Team 5. Okay, let's go to JJ in Team 4, one that he hasn't been as fired up about, per se, in a negative way. So Tyreek and Miles and Sam Laporta, who will he pair with those three? Um. You know, I'm a little bit nervous about this player. I think he, his frustration is starting to show. But I'm going to take a shot on an older guy, um, Stefan Diggs from Buffalo. Uh, I think he might have like an acrimonious departure from that team in the offseason. Uh, but there's plenty of good landing spots for him. So I'm just going to continue going with uh, adding my second wide receiver and put on Stefan Diggs. 
Diggs to team four. Okay. We are on to team three with Joe and uh, two wide receivers, Justin Jefferson and Nico Collins, along with Jonathan Taylor. Who will he pair with that? Will it be another? I, Go ahead, Joe. I was going to say, I do, do like that Diggs pick. I feel like it's a good value at this point. And I am going to go to the defensive side of the ball here. And looks like Micah Parsons is still available. So I'm going to go ahead and grab him right now. Micah Parsons coming off the board. The first IDP for team three. Great value in round four for Micah Parsons for sure. Okay, team two, Sean, C.D. Lamb, Brandon Ayuk, and Travis Etienne. Is this one going to land its first defensive player? It is. I'm just a little undecided on which one. Do I go edge or linebacker? <laughs> so uh, with Parsons leaving, that's that knocks another elite edge rusher down. So I'm going to go ahead and take Nick Bosa here. Nick Bosa. I have to admit, I thought both of these two, Parsons and Bosa, were going to go a little bit higher in this draft. So great value here at the end of round four for both of those IDPs. Once again, particularly with the scoring system, with, with heavy points for sacks and tackles for loss and so forth. So great picks there. Okay, team one to round up round four will be Will. Sometimes it's just nice to have a steady freddy linebacker to um slot into that lb1 spot so i'm gonna go ahead and grab fred warner here fred warner so team one adds its first idp with fred warner so let's recap round four our first four picks were trey mcbride tj hawkinson keenan allen and cooper cup followed by defensive josh allen ernest jones dk metcalf and debo samuel and the final four of that round were Stefan Diggs, Micah Parsons, Nick Bosa, and Fred Warner. So we're starting to see a little bit of a run there on IDPs as we end up, to, uh, as we close out round four there. A um, couple of questions here. Kyron Williams. Okay, t went to team five and Johnny. Sean, are you surprised that Kyron Williams went after James Cook? and Travis Etienne and Jonathan Taylor, given he was number two in points per game this year at the running back position. I, he, he's overlooked uh, by a lot of people, uh, uh, half of us included, I would say. Um, I think the injury there in the middle of the season just kind of made everybody forget about him. Uh, I think it's great value. He should be going higher because – there's not a lot of money or anything invested in this guy. So of course they're going to keep him and rot his wheels off. Right. So uh, Sean McVay finally has a running back. He likes or likes him or whatever that ordeal with, you know, uh, cook and was it cook? No, uh, cam makers was. So yeah, I think it's, it's great pick, great value. Yeah, he should be going higher. Will Josh Allen went as the number one, quarterback off the board the only quarterback off the board so far so two two quick questions on that one is do you agree that he's the number one quarterback as we look forward to next year given some of the churn in buffalo and um well let's just go with that one i i don't agree that he's necessarily the number one quarterback going forward um especially with the frustration from stefan diggs over the past few seasons the emergence of james cook um could take away some of that rushing upside that we love of Josh Allen, especially if they start utilizing Cook the way that they should. I, I think he's still going to be a top three perennial quarterback, but as the one and actually to this point only quarterback off the board, I, I, I don't think he'll be returning value there. Okay, great. Thank you. It's, it's interesting to JJ's point. He was the number two overall scorer across all positions um, in the Kings Classic League. Um, but some interesting points there brought up by when J.J. picked him as well as when uh, we'll just uh, discuss there. OK, so let's go ahead and start round five. And uh, Will, you are up with three offensive players in one IDP at this point. So let's get yeah, round let, five going, Will. Let's tee off round five with a free agent that I don't think it matters where he lands. We've seen him be a wide receiver one, even though he's a wide receiver two pretty consistently. We're going to grab T. Higgins here. T. Higgins. 
goes with the first pick of round five. Okay, Sean, you are up with team two, and you have C.D. Lamb, Ayuk, Etienne on offense, and Nick Boza on defense. The other side. Yeah, so I'm oh, going to go. Excuse me, real quick. I'm just going to mention to oh. producer Andrew that T. Higgins needs to be with team one. Sorry about that, Sean. No, you have it reversed, Ricky. Just a little. Yeah, um, we're fixing that right now. There we go. All right. So sorry, Sean. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, we're going to go linebacker here. I want a steady one. Uh, I love his position on this team. It's Bobby Okereke. Bobby Okereke of the New York Giants goes to team two. All right. Team three, Joe. With three offensive players and then a real steal in round four with Micah Parsons falling that far down. Joe, who do you go with with your uh, round five pick here? I'm going to stick with IDP here, and I'm going to take Roquan Smith for the Ravens. Roquan Smith of the Ravens. And I see JJ laughing, so, oh, my gosh, when we get to team four, this will be interesting, I am sure. <laughs> Which is coming up right now. So, Man. JJ, what did you think of that Roquan pick? <laughs> that was a fantastic pick. Again, uh, a little early, uh, right? Yeah, about one one position early. <laughs> um, so, let me start thinking again. A um, little panic order, like I like to do. Oh, crap. Oh, I'm going to go with the linebacker that I chose uh, uh, last uh uh, mock draft Monday for IDP draft. I'm going to go with Nick Bolton. Uh, Nick add Bolton. him to my team here, Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, I know there's some guys who scored better than him. There's some guys who are ranked higher. I like Nick Bolton, and I think he's going to do good next – continue his great play into next season. So Nick Bolton. But Yeah, he had a little bit of a injury bug this year, but with both Willie Gay and Drew Tranquil being free agents for Kansas City, I don't see him bringing them both back, which should mean more playing time for a healthy Nick Bolton. So great pick there. Okay, so team five now with three wide receivers, one running back, um, the wide receivers being Chase, DJ Moore, and Debo, the running back being Kyron. Who are we going to add to team five, Johnny? You know what? Uh, I'm looking here. I, I like the. I'm getting a little scared about the linebackers going off the board, but I still am confident in my IDP skills. I'm still going to put that on hush for now. Um, but I can't walk out of here um, when there's an opportunity without when there's an opportunity to walk out with a uh, elite tight end. So Mark Andrews has not been taken yet. I, I'm not going to let that go any further. Um, Give me Mark Andrews on this team. It's a big. I don't want to say big, but. Uh, I still think he's elite, and I think there's a there is a decline to the next tier of, of um, tight ends. So I think I'm going to play it safe here and get uh, Mark Andrews. Mark Mark Andrews to Team Five here. So um, lots of tight ends went before Andrews. We may we may have to talk about that at our next break uh, between rounds. So Mark Andrews for Team Five. Okay, let's move to Team Six. And Sean, you are up with Brees Hall and three receivers of Nakua, Waddle, and Metcalf. Yeah, so that was a, a great pick by Johnny. That's that's who I was going to take here because he has been sitting there too long, uh, Mark Andrews. So uh, I will take one of the probably next tier tight ends, and I'm looking at Kyle Pitts. I think he's finally Kyle going to Pitts. be unleashed, and it's going to pay big dividends in fantasy. Kyle Pitts goes with this pick. And so it's interesting. So we have a little bit of technical thing that started all of a sudden. Um, producer Andrew was updating the players, but they're not showing up on the screen on, on, on from. OK, there they go now. OK, great. It is it is back and working. Andrews and Pitt showing. Sorry about that for that little technical difficulty. And let's go to team seven and Joe. Well, that was a little early for Kyle Pitts, I think. Uh, maybe a whole pick early, but. <laughs> now you know the feeling yeah. oh, I, do. I can tell you the other one I was thinking if that helps you <laughs> no that's okay but I don't want to snipe you here but a player I was I'm also excited to go for here is another running back I am surprised is still around it's actually a couple of those but I'm going to go Tony Pollard um, another player I'm not super high on and thought the 
how much love he had coming into this year and over the past few years was very much overblown. And, but he still was a top. Was he an RB? I think he finished as an RB1 this year or pretty close to. Sorry, my child's iPad's very loud right now. I'm going to turn that down in a second. Um, yeah, Pollard. Tony Pollard to Team 7. Now, I must admit that is a, a little bit earlier than I expected for Mr. Pollard, a free agent turning 27 who showed that maybe he can't handle as big a workload. Okay, Team 8. JJ, I, um, I'm guessing he didn't snipe you that time because I didn't see any um, nonverbal gestures. That is correct. I, I didn't have a meltdown again, which is great. Uh, this is my crazy team. So let's get a little crazy. Let's get nuts. Uh, I'm going to take Malik Neighbors. Um, Malik Neighbors. Pair up the rookies, baby. Let's kick in that rookie door for the second time. Malik Neighbors. Malik Neighbors to go along with Marvin Harrison. Malik Neighbors, another LSU stud, might I add. But, all, but uh, by all accounts, um, no worse than a top 10 pick and potentially even a top five pick. So Harrison neighbors, very interesting at the wide receiver position for team eight. Okay. Team nine with will. Yeah. Um, I think here there is one running back that I'm happy and a little surprised has fallen this far because he's still been super productive. Um, that is Joe Mixon. He should be heading into his year, his uh, age 28 season, and he's still just been a solid running back for the Bengals. So I'm going to grab Joe Mixon here. Joe Mixon goes to team nine. And that will be paired with uh, Pacheco at running back and A.J. Brown and Cup at wide receiver and Daniil Hunter at, at, at the edge position. So team 10. The Geritol team with Kelsey and Watt and Evans and Keenan Allen. Will the trend continue or will he bring some youth to help the uh, older team along? Sean. I will not. We're sticking with the old guys here. It is Bobby Wagner's time. Bobby Wagner. Do. Bobby Wagner, Seattle linebacker this year as he returned to them. What's interesting, Seattle, there are three linebackers if you call Bush a linebacker of Wagner, Brooks, we and don't. Bush are all, all free agents. <laughs> so it'd be really interesting with a new head coach, what's going to happen in Seattle and where will Wagner uh, land uh, uh, and end up? Team 11, Joe. So I'm going to go running back here again and realistically probably should have taken this running back with Team 7 and Pollard here, but Saquon Barkley still is there, I believe. Saquon. Yeah. But also a free agent, but he has been producing – and still a great talent. Hopefully he winds up on a better offense. Saquon Barkley to pair with Bijan Robinson and Max Crosby and Devontae and TJ Hawkinson. And we go now to Team 12, who has Jameer Gibbs, Michael Pittman, Rashad White, and Trey McBride. So, Johnny, who are you going to wrap up round five with? I'm going to go a little risk-reward here. Uh, I'm going to take Rasheed Rice from Kansas city. Um, maybe, you know, they draft somebody that further complicates things. Maybe they sign somebody A T Higgins would be a great landing spot there. Um, but Rasheed Rice, I can't ignore what he's done as a rookie. Um, almost a thousand yards, you know, he's, he, he had a hes hesitation of touchdowns there, but he started to pick that up. We see what he's doing in the playoffs. Uh, he, he might be, you know, depending on Travis Kelsey's situation, I mean, it's looking like he's going to stay another year, but if they win the Super Bowl, I doubt it. I bet, Kelsey rides off in the sunset. That has to be a real, um, real, you know, option here. So uh, I, I can't ignore what Rashid Rice has done. Give me a chance that he only gets better, you know, and, and if he does match this year, I'm happy with that too right here. So Rashid Rice to me is a good pick. Okay. Rashid Rice rounds out round five. So recapping for the listening audience, T Higgins, Bobby O'Karake, Raquan Smith, and Nick Bolton as the four, first four picks around five. The middle four, a couple of tight ends with Andrews and Pitts, followed by Pollard and Malik Neighbors. And rounding out the round five, Joe Mixon, Bobby Wagner, Saquon Barkley, and Rasheed Rice. So now we're going to move to round six. As a reminder um, to our um, 
esteemed panelists of the settings that we have related to offense and defense. So just keep that in mind of how we set up the sleeper board here for this draft. And with that, we will go to Johnny to kick off round six. All right. With this one, I have two running backs already with this team, but I'm not scared to take a third. Um, to me, running back, if you want to stock up, if you don't use those guys, you can trade them in the season. So um, to me, a, a great pick here. I'm surprised he's still on the board. You know, maybe there's some hesitation, but Josh Jacobs, man. I mean, he's a free agent. Um, I Josh bet he, Jacobs. you know, they, they brought their coach. They found their coach now, at least for now, Antonio uh, Pierce. So I, I do like Josh Jacobs. And, and one thing, you know, that doesn't scare me if he goes somewhere else, uh, he's going to be the guy no matter where he goes. And I don't think that we've seen just, you know, that his career year rushing, we've seen it. But I don't think we've seen the, the cream of the crop with uh, Josh Jacobs in, in, in pass catching yet. I, I think he's underutilized in that category. I think it, things can get better for him there. So I think because, uh, you know, his contract situation – and the uncertainty of the team, this is a great pick for how far he's fallen here. Josh Jacobs. So I believe that's the second of the free, uh, third of the free agent running backs that have just have gone in the last few picks with Pollard and Barkley and now Jacobs. Interesting. And others such as Derek Henry and Austin Eckler are still out there as well. Okay, so team 11, Joe, with Bijan and Max Crosby and Devontae Adams and TJ Hawkinson and Saquon Barkley. Who are you going to add to that team, Joe? So I'm going to go with wide receiver here, who I'm very surprised is still around. Double checking the board to make sure. Um, going to pay Devonta Smith with Devonta Adams. The Devonta team, Adams, and now Devonta Smith going to team 11. Okay, team 10, which is Sean. Yeah, by old guys. So old by running back standards. We're taking Nick Chubb here. Taking the chance with Nick Chubb here in round six. The man who had two major knee surgeries. But Cleveland says they want him back and he's working hard to rehab to get back. Will he be as a stud in week one or will it take him to week eight or week 10 to finally get there? It'll be interesting to see. Okay, team nine. Will, you are up. So I'm going to grab a linebacker here that finally broke out like we've been waiting for him to break out. Um, he's also heading into a contract season, which I love guys when they're coming into a contract season after a breakout year. And that's going to be linebacker Quincy Williams. Quincy Williams of the New York Jets. I saw Joe starting to grimace there when you when you started mentioning linebacker. It would be interesting to see if that's who he had in mind when we get to Team 7. But before we get there, we are at Team 8 with JJ. So, so JJ, sir, you are up, sir. Sometimes when you go into a draft, you have to be prepared for somebody who has, like, the wrong rankings. So I'm just pretending this team has dynasty rankings. So, you know, you always have that one guy with the old magazine still drafting. Um, I'm going to go with Drake London. Uh, wide receiver Drake here. London. Um, I mean, I, I know I took him a couple weeks ago in, on Mock Draft Monday, I think our first one. Um, I like Drake London. And if Kyle Pitts can get picked early, Drake London might have a resurgence too with the new coaching staff in town. Drake London. Tra Drake London to pair with uh, the rookies, Harrison and Neighbors on this team at wide receiver. Okay, Team 7, Joe. So this is a pick also sticking with youth that I am very excited to make. Uh, rookie tight end Brock Bowers, the top Brock tight end Bowers. prospect. Best sense and better than Kyle Pitts as a prospect. And just expect him to be top five tight end right at the gate. No, it's hard for that position as rookies, no matter what this year said, but... Yeah. So is there going to be a change for years? It's taken roughly rookie tight ends, roughly, you know, three years on average to really take off. This year was a little bit different with the Laportas and the Kincaids. Will that trend continue with Brock Bowers? We shall see. Okay. So we now move on to team six and Sean, you are up, sir. All right. So this team is going to take its first IDP and go with Aiden Hutchinson. I forgot he was still available. I should have grabbed him earlier. <laughs> yeah. I think we all forgot about him. Uh, 
Okay, so I had a little technical difficulty, Sean. So could I ask you to repeat who you picked, please, sir? Yeah, Aiden Hutchinson for Aiden my first Hutchinson. IDP pick. Detroit Lions, first IDP player for Team 6. Okay, let's move to Team 5, and that'll be Johnny. Yeah, so I only have one running back here. Um, I need to it, get some insurance. I need to get another starter. I, I think I'm at this point. I'm going to take the chance on Devin Achan. Uh, I think that you know he's a really great prospect moving forward, especially in dynasty. You know, a lot of people have hesitations on health and size. I get that, um, but at the same time, I, if we don't think that much is going to change in Miami, and maybe Tua gets you know better as an the offense gets better, Waddle has a better year. Tyreek doesn't look like he's declining. Um, you know. Mostert is great. He had a great year, but uh, he is getting older, and and maybe that it's kind of like the Jameer Gibbs factor. You know, let's see how much he can take at first before we let the training wheels off. So hopefully, those training wheels come off next year. If he can stay healthy, um, I think De Devin A. Chan is, is a great uh, walking bomb. Devin A. Chan to Team Five. Thank you, Johnny. Um, and Johnny, check Discord for me real quick, buddy. Okay, Team Four. With um, Tyreek Hill, Miles Garrett, Sam Laporta, Stefan Diggs, and Nick Bolton. JJ, who are you adding to that team? You know, uh, I saw that there were only three teams left without a running back heading into this round. Uh, team Geritol took Nick Chubb. Uh, and I'm like, oh, that team is old. They might need a walker, just like I do. Kenneth Walker, running back, would be my pick. <laughs> I love it. Boom. <clears throat> Kenneth Walker. <laughs> <laughs> there was nobody four. named Kane in the league. I, I was looking for a Kane. <laughs> there was a Dion Kane, Kane Cold receiver. wide receiver. Yeah. Oh, Dion Kane. Wow. Okay. But yes, Kenneth Walker. <laughs> that was awesome, JJ. All right. Team three. Joe, you are up, sir. Yes. And I am going to take another rookie here. My rookie wide receiver, too, Mr. Rome Adunes. Adunze. Another rookie, Romo Dunze, goes with mm -hmm. uh, the 10th the pick of round six to Team Joe. Sean, you are up with Team Two. Yeah, so I think this team is going to open the seal on defensive tackle and take DeForest Buckner. DeForest Buckner. The most consistent the player tackle. in the league. DeForest Buckner, first DT and an excellent defensive tackle there. And let's round out round six with Will. Yeah, so, um, dang, that DeForest Buckner was one of the three I was looking at here. Um, I think we're going to go with, we're going to go with another steady Eddie tackle monster here um, and just set up a linebacking core that we don't even have to look at for an entire season. We're going to draft Alex Singleton. Alex Singleton from the Denver Broncos wraps up round six. Okay, so for our listening audience, let's recap round six with the first four picks being Josh Jacobs, Devonta Smith, Nick Chubb, and Quincy Williams, followed by Drake London, Blake Bowers, Aiden Hutchinson, and Devin Achan. And then wrapping it up, the last four picks, Kenneth Walker, Romo Dunze, DeForest Buckner and Alex Singleton. So a couple of questions here. First, let's let's go to Joe. Joe, did you expect three rookies to go in the first six rounds of this mock draft, considering the NFL draft hasn't happened yet? I think it makes a lot of sense, especially with these three or four. Four, actually. Four, four including Bowers. Yep. If, I think these four are definitely worth, even if there was an IDP, like I think all four of Four of them should be top four round picks, assuming they don't go to really crappy spots, of course. But at this point, I think it makes a lot of sense. And I think we'll see a few more pretty soon. This class is legit. It sure is. Johnny, a lot of older running backs, uh, quasi older running backs. You have your Joe Mixons, your Josh Jacobs, your Chubbs, your Barkley. Think we're getting good value in um, uh, late fifth, early sixth kind of round, or still a little bit too early for a lot of those guys? No, I think it's the right time. I mean, Nick Chubb, I think, is a great call. Uh, he gets brought back and, and picks up where he left off at 28. Um, I, you know, Josh Jacobs, my pick, I, I think he was late. 
Um, Kenneth Walker, he's done nothing but ball. You know, maybe people are scared about Charbonnet, but no, I mean, this is this is now we're going into the seventh round. I mean, uh, I think a lot of these players have gone late compared to, especially if you looked at where they went last year. Okay, thank you, Johnny. Okay, so before we kick off round seven, I do want to make a quick plug here. IDPguys.org, soon to be IDP Plus, is running a special right now with the with the promo code mock draft. You can get one month for one dollar. We have incredible articles coming out just about every day of the week, defense and offense, rookies, rankings, etc. Check out our tools that we had that you can use during the year, etc. One dollar mock draft. Check it out. Real, uh, really, really worth it. Okay, let's go ahead and start round seven. And Will, take it away. Yeah, I was really hoping you were going to talk a little bit slower here. Um, I need a, this team needs another wide receiver. We have a number one on his team wide receiver in Tank Dell, and that's all this team's sitting on. Um, so let's, we're going to grab another one, number one wide receiver on his team, who I understand why he's still here. There's a lot of question marks with this team, um, even the quarterback situation. And I'm not even sure if they have a coach yet, but we're going to go ahead and snatch up the older guy, Terry McLaurin. Terry McLaurin goes to team one to pair with Tank Dell and T Higgins at wide receiver, Warner and Singleton at linebacker and McCaffrey and Cook at running back. Okay. That's a great value Gene. here. Yes. Um, agree. It'll be real interesting to see what they do with their coaching situation. Okay. Team two is up, and that'll be Sean. Yeah. So this team's fairly balanced here. I'm, I'm actually pretty happy with it. Um, looking at running back, this might be a little bit of a surprise. I'm, I'm going to take his upside, and that's Ramondre Stevenson here. Ramondre Stevenson goes with the second pick of round seven. So that'll pair with Travis Etienne in that running back backfield. But that is a very balanced team with three, well, now four offense and three defense, but three and three through the first six rounds on offense and IDP. Okay, team three. Hmm. That I is between, Joe Harlow. I'm between two names here. Oh, goodness. Same position? No, different positions. Um, one is a the tight end is, and the other is a running back. So. The good news as you're as you're considering it, no, the, at least you don't have the sleeper clock ticking. Come on, man, Thanks make for, your pick. <laughs> for real. Um, I am going to go with a – we're going to take the tight end here. Um, I'm going to go with George Kittle. George Kittle. Seventh round. Nice. High upside could be tight end one. What's really interesting here is I I'm, I try to count really quick. I believe that is the ninth tight end. Um, someone can audit me on that real quick with only one quarterback that's going so far. And if we flip back to a year ago, um, we would have probably had about four or five quarterbacks going at this point in, in probably one tight, uh, maybe two tight ends with Kelsey and Andrews. So big change in the depth that tight end for sure. Okay, team four, JJ. You know, I really like, Ricky, when you just make me feel terrible. Like, you, you had to talk really great about Garrett Wilson right after he got sniped. You're talking about how all the quarterbacks are falling after I picked one a couple of rounds ago. Like, I get it. I get what you're trying to say. I'm picking up what you're putting down, my friend. Um, <laughs> there was no poking at any particular oh, trap. That it oh, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. <laughs> um, all right, so... When Joe said it was between two players, I figured both were going to be the guy I was going to pick. Uh, luckily, he did it. I'm going to go defensive end and go with Montez Sweat. Um, Montez Sweat. Led two teams in sacks this year. That's pretty good. Uh, he's welcome on my team on a revamped Chicago defense that I think is going to start playing a lot better as the year goes on. Montez Sweat. And... and that is right. An NFL record, the first person in the history of the NFL to lead two teams in sacks during a season. And many people thought he was going to fall off when he went to the Bears, yours truly included, and that did not happen. In fact, it seemed to rejuvenate him. Maybe it was all the money they paid him as well. Okay. <laughs> Doesn't hurt. Doesn't hurt. Okay. Team five, Johnny, you are up, sir. 
All right, so I'm going to break my seal on IDP here, and uh, I'm really thankful of how this draft went out because I think I get a great player here even though I've waited so long, uh, and that's TJ Edwards. TJ Edwards just keeps better and better every year. Um, a lot of people thought maybe, you know, let's wait and see, pump the brakes, see what's happening with Tremaine Edmonds coming in. Tremaine Edmonds um, kind of took the coverage role, and, and, and TJ Edwards – really had a, his best year of his whole career. So uh, I, I, now that we have a year under our belts, I, I, I do think the pegging order has, you know, brought Edwards to the top. Um, I'm, I really like what he brings, you know, eight tackles for loss, two and a half sacks this year, three picks, a forced fumble, two recoveries. Um, this is his best year and only at 27, I, I expect him to repeat next year. So I'm, I'm fine with TJ Edwards here. TJ Edwards, a great value there in round seven. Okay, team six. Sean, you are up. Yeah, I really like the TJ Edwards pick. Um, in fact, he was one of the few I was debating here, so I appreciate the help there. Uh, right. The next guy I, I was really considering was uh, Robert Spillane. I really like how Robert he has solidified Spillane. the Raiders linebacker position and – with Antonio Pierce leading the way, I think he's just going to blow up even more next year. Robert Spillane of the Raiders, and um, with Pierce staying there, looks like Patrick Graham will be staying there, so probably the same defensive system, which would bode well for him. Okay, Team 7 and Joe, you are up. With Amon Ra, Olave, and Wilson at wide receiver, tight end of Bowers, Pollard at running back, and only one IDP with Ernest Jones. Mm-hmm. So the running back I was debating on for team three is still here. And this makes this pick makes me feel a lot better. Do kind of regret that Tony Pollard pick. There are a couple running backs that genuinely Nick Chubb, Mondre just totally overlooked. That's bad process by me. But if you told me that I could get in the fifth round, Aaron Jones and flip Pollard to the seventh round. So just flip flop these two. I would be way more happy, way happier with this one. So we're going to go Aaron Jones here and act like I did not make a mistake in the fifth round. <laughs> Aaron Jones goes here. And I, I like that re, that reverse psychology, revisionist history psychology that you just played on yourself, Joe. Thank I you. think that worked, though. OK. All right. Teammate JJ. All right. Um, I'm going to go with the guy I really liked coming into this season. I think I was higher than uh, a lot of my friends on. Uh, I'm going to go with Evan Ingram at tight end. And I know, uh, oh, dear God, I'm, dra- I'm drafting yeah, no, no, so that's... many Jaguars on this team. Ah, whatever. <laughs> this is my crazy team. Evan Ingram. Evan Ingram. So that would be the third Jaguar on this team. And hopefully they're, they're actually Jaguars and not Jags and just another guy in their performance this coming year. <laughs> another shot of cur- – Boom! I'm watching you. <laughs> watching you, Ricky. All right. I I just asked the question. That's all. Or made a statement. I'm not sure which. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah okay, yeah. Joe Rogan. <laughs> I have never been compared to Joe Rogan in my life for the record. You're welcome. <laughs> until, until that very moment. <laughs> Team nine, Will, you are up. So there, that TJ Edwards pick really hurt my heart a lot. Um, I debated him there at seven one, really thought he would make it all the way back to my team nine there for him with Quincy Williams. But there is another young linebacker who showed out really well that I really, I I hope he can play as well next season as he did last year. Uh, That's my boy, Terrell Bernard. Terrell Bernard from the Buffalo Bills. And boy, I tell you, when he was being carted off, thought that was a really bad injury. And luckily it turned out to be not nearly as bad as, um, it looked when he was being carted off. So Terrell Bernard with team nine. Okay, Sean, team 10. Yeah, so this might be one of the younger guys I got on here. Uh, we're going IDP edge rusher Trey Hendrickson, who has been very consistent the last several years. He is boomer bust, but he booms more than he busts, if that helps. Trey Hendrickson, and he had a record year for him for sacks. I think it was uh, 16 and a half, if I remember correctly, in terms of sacks that he had. Um, uh, but, uh, actually 17 and a half. So, um, in this scoring system, quite, quite a steal here in round seven to get Hendricks in there. If he performs similarly this coming year, team 11, Joe. So I'm going to stick with a teammate of Trey Hendrickson and a fellow university of Wyoming graduate, Logan Wilson, linebacker Logan 17 Wilson. in the scoring last year. Um, 
the emergence of Jermaine Pratt does scare me a tiny bit, but Logan Wilson was still the top snap getter scorer pretty much every week for them. I feel like just very consistent, especially at this point, that's my linebacker one, just consistent player drop in there. Expect solid top 18 linebacker. Logan Wilson. And to wrap up round seven, we will go to Johnny. All right. Well, <clears throat> need a wide receiver here, and I'm going to take a stab on a guy. Um, you know, the, the track record doesn't really um, solidify him here, but uh, this team didn't have a, a repeating leading receiver until – or their, their only week was week three and four. It was Romeo Dobbs, but I'm not going to take Dobbs. I'm going to take his counterpart with Jaden Reed. Uh, I really like what this rookie brought this year. Kind of like a Debo Samuel in the sense of, like, you know, they're giving him those rushes too, walking bomb, you know, can go um, make a 60-yard play half at any time. If you're in return yard leagues – Pay attention to him too. You know, I'm sure you already knew Jaden Reed in return yard leagues, but I think he gets better. You know, I, I do think uh, I want to see some consistency. You know, with wide receivers there in Green Bay, they do seem to spread the ball. But I do, I, I'm, I'm willing to bet on Jaden Reed's um, year two leap. Okay, Jaden Reed. Okay, so we're going to recap round seven here, and then as we're doing that, we've got one more round to go, and I'll ask our esteemed panel to start thinking about. What was their favorite pick of the draft? What was their maybe least favorite do-over pick potentially if they if they could? Um, and of the teams that are not theirs, which one was their favorite team? So just want to plant those seeds with our panel here as a recap round seven is, and we'll, we'll go through that after we, uh, after round eight. But in terms of recapping round seven, the first four picks, Terry McLaurin, Ramondre Stevenson, George Kittle, and Montez Sweat. Followed by T.J. Edwards, Robert Spillane, Aaron Jones, and Evan Ingram. And wrapping up round seven was Terrell Bernard, Trey Hendrickson, Logan Wilson, and Jaden Reed. And with that, we will kick off round eight, and we will go back to Johnny. And for the audience, for the listening audience in particular, I'll, I'll, I'm going to recap all the teams for each of the picks. So. Team 12 has Jameer Gibbs, Rashad White, and Josh Jacobs at running back. Michael Pittman, Rasheed Rice, and Jaden Reed at wide receiver. Trey McBride at tight end. And no IDPs at this point. Johnny, you are up, sir. All right. I'm going to go uh, with somebody who I think it has a bounce back year, and that's linebacker Quay Walker. I think you Quay know, Walker. he, he kind of got shuffled down this low because he had a tough time staying on the field. Um, especially in the, in the, the beginning of the, the season, he really balled out um, before those injuries started hitting tackles were through the roof. Um, especially with Devondre Campbell, you getting older. I'm uncertain with his future there. Maybe they bring somebody in, but regardless, we've seen that two linebackers can bang it out there in green Bay and make those tackles. So uh, I'm really confident, not only with redraft, but additionally in dynasty too. I, I like Quay Walker a lot. He's all, he's only 24 years old. I think the sky's the limit for him. So he's going to have a bounce back here. Quay Walker, and uh, he was wearing the green dot except for when he was injured. And uh, as he started to come from injury later in the year, he started improving again, like he was earlier in the year. So great pick there to start off round eight. Okay, Team 11, which is Joe, which has Bijan Robinson and Saquon Barkley at running back. It has Devante and Devante at wide receiver with Adams and Smith. At defensive end, he's in our slash edge. We have Crosby. And at let's see, who am I forgetting? We got Hawkinson at tight end and Logan Wilson at linebacker. That's what I get for jumping around by position as opposed to reading them in order. So, okay, Joe, who are you going to add to this team? So I'm going to add another defensive end here. I'm going to go with Will Anderson, second year, or now to be second year player for the Texans. I think he's really going to have a blow up year and be a top tier edge rusher. Will Anderson. And I have to admit, when the draft happened and Houston made that trade, I thought they overpaid. And the way things have worked out, it worked out phenomenally for them. So Will Anderson, team 11. Okay, team 10 with Sean. We, uh, the geriatric team, and we have Kelsey and TJ Watt and Mike Evans, Keenan Allen, Bobby Wagner, Nick Chubb, and the youngster Trey Hendrickson at 28 or 29. <laughs> Sean, who do you add to this team 10? 
let, let's keep it old and uh, let's go with Alvin Kamara here. Alvin Kamara. Let's hope he gets all those here. receptions again, like he did in the middle of uh, the season this year. Yep. The Saints are in cap purgatory, for lack of a better term. And so they're going to have to make some interesting decisions here. I believe Camaro will be safe. and uh, But we shall see here. But uh, let's move on to Team 9. And Team 9 is Will. And he has A.J. Brown, Isaiah Pacheco, Daniil Hunter, Cooper Cup, <clears throat> Joe Mixon, Quincy Williams, and Terrell Bernard. Who does he add to this team? So Team 9 is going to do something that if Will was the actual owner of Team 9, he would never do. And that's draft a defensive back in the eighth round. Um, there's one DB in particular that I have an affinity for that makes massive big plays on every team that he's been on, just finishing out the season on his third team, coming in to be a free agent. That's Chauncey Gardner-Johnson. Chauncey Gardner-Johnson. CJGJ, if I remember correctly, if I got those acronyms right. So the defensive back seal is now broken with chauncey gardner going here in round eight let's go to team eight now which would be jj and in recapping that team marvin harrison foy aluakon the two josh allens malik neighbors drake london and evan ingram jj who are you gonna round out this team with with round eight i know we already broke the seal on uh defensive tackle i'm gonna go with a guy who i just kept waiting to fall off this year and he never fell off uh, Justin Matabuke. Um, Justin I mean, Matabuke. I'm, I'm interested to see what he can do in the second year. He was the top defensive tackle in the Kings uh, classic scoring. So let's see what he can do this year. And and he is a free agent. So it'd be interesting if Baltimore can keep him and he stays in the same scheme or if he moves to a different scheme and what that will impact from a stats perspective. But he had a phenomenal breakout year this year. Absolutely agree with that, JJ. See, I said something nice. Okay. <laughs> team seven, Joe will be up. This team is made up of so far Monroe, St. Brown, Olave, Garrett Wilson, Ernest Jones. And then we flip flopped Aaron Jones and then Brock Bowers and then Tony Pollard, even though that wasn't the actual draft order, but that was the psychology of it. Okay. And he gives me the thumbs up. So with that, who you're adding to this team in round eight? You know, that is a great question. I'm really unsure where to go here. A lot of really good picks recently. The snipe here. So I think to stall a bit, I want to, will not be taking this player, but want to wax poetic a little bit. They're also not in sleeper yet, but the top IDP rookie is Edron Cooper to me, linebacker from Texas A&M. He's a player who would be in conversation here. Not many people know about him yet. I um, think he could sneak into the end of the first round of the actual draft, but this is a very bad linebacker class. Um, he is one of two, maybe three guys who are worth top 75 picks in this class, in my opinion. So that's a name to keep an eye on, except unless you're in one of my leagues. Don't steal them from me, please. Um, yeah, so the name I am going to go with here is I'm going to take an edge rusher probably a little early, but – Huge upside. Really want to take the shot on Jermaine Johnson. Jermaine Johnson, the New York Jets, gets a good a seal of approval from JJ, our resident Jet fan here. So Jermaine Johnson, poised for um, had a had a great year and poised for even more of a breakout year. So Jermaine Johnson, Team Seven. Okay, Sean with Team Six, and that team comprised of Brees Hall, Puka Nakua. Jalen Waddle, DK Metcalf, Kyle Pitts, Mr. Hutchinson from Detroit, and Robert Spillane. Who are you going to wrap up this team with? Yeah, so I think Brees Hall is a little lonely there in the running back room, and I'm going to pair him up with Spears, Mr. Tajay Spears from the Tennessee Titans, who should now be the top guy there. Uh, we've seen him uh, really – show his uh, receiving skills and his explosiveness. And I'm excited to see what he can do this year. Tajay Spears to the Tennessee Titans. It'll be really interesting to your point, particularly new head coach Callahan. Will they rely on Spears and, and, and spend money and draft picks on other positions? Will they bring someone to platoon with Spears? It'll be really interesting to see there. 
And by the way, I disagree with you, Joe Harlow, on Edron Cooper. I, there's no way he goes in the first round. I will, we will have some sort of bet on that one, buddy. <laughs> I would be surprised, but I don't. I think in a very weak class, it wouldn't shock me. It's one of those. Okay. If there were two so we'll really be, good ones, I would. Just, I would agree. And I did that purposely to do a segue because coming up, we will be moving into rookie drafts as we move forward. So stay tuned. We will be doing some IDP rookie drafts, some offense rookie drafts, and combined offense and IDP rookie drafts. So stay tuned for that. Wait, okay. this wasn't a rookie draft? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Teammate, I'm so sorry. Oh, I, I thought Team 10 would have given that away. That, that wasn't a rookie draft for sure. Yeah, we got both extremes out of this. That's nice. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so Team 5, Johnny's up. We have Jamar Chase, DJ Moore, Kyron Williams, Debo Samuel, Mark Andrews, Devin Achan, and TJ Edwards. Johnny, who's going to be your round eight pick? Real easy for me here. Surprise, he's still on the board. Give me Nick Bosa. Oh, you get the womp, womp, womp. I believe Nick Bosa has already been picked. Oh, he's already picked. He has already been picked. Womp, womp, Wait, what's womp. the punishment? Man, I scout. I thought he, whose team is he on? What team? team uh, my two. number two. Yeah. In round four. Round four. Oh, I got you there. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, would have been great if value. That, if the we'll offensive that. points were here, I think he would have to do two shots if, if it was the offensive points team. Dude, that that was nice. <laughs> I'm going to start doing this later in the day. <laughs> uh, all right, I'll take a defensive tackle here. Give me Christian Wilkins. Christian nice. Wilkins. Great pick, great talent. Free agent. Be interesting to see where he ends up if he stays in Miami. And if he does, even th with that, Fangio – uh, moving on now to Philadelphia. Be real interesting to see what happens with Wilkins. Does he end up in Philadelphia? We shall see. Okay, team four, which would be JJ. He has Tyreek Hill, Miles Garrett, Sam Laporta, Stefan Diggs, Nick Bolton, Kenneth Walker, who doesn't need a Walker, and Montez Sweat. All right. Um, I feel like when you draft, I always tell people draft players you love. Um, because you want to cheer for your fantasy team. But you do need the bad guy in your team. I took Josh Allen on my teammate who I don't like. Uh, so I'm going to take another player I don't like, but I think is good for fantasy. Uh, James Conner. James Conner. No, he's getting old, but he sure does touch that ball a lot in Arizona. Uh, so I'll take James Conner. James Conner. Um, I would have thought that was a player more for Team 10. but. Um, you know, we looked at him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you yeah, did consider him. I figured you did. But, you know, people talk about James Conner being a boring pick, but every year when he's not injured, the games he does play in, very solid with great stats. So James Conner to team four. Okay, team three, which is Joe's team. Justin Jefferson, Nico Collins, Jonathan Taylor, Micah Parsons, Roquan Smith, Romo Dunze, and George Kittle. So, Joe, who are you going to round out this team with in this mock draft? I'm going to roll with another running back here. This might be a little early for this player, but I still really do believe in the talent. Uh, Javante Williams for the Broncos. Javante Williams. Don't see much competition there. P. Ryan and McLaughlin are, are what they are. And Sean Payton loves to use those running backs. So, hopefully, another year out of that big, big knee injury, he really takes off again. You took the words out of my mouth. Another year away from that knee injury, um, which was pretty severe relative to Brees Hall's. And so will that make a big difference? That could be quite a steal here in round eight. Okay, Sean with team two, C.D. Lamb, Brandon Ayuk, Travis Etienne, Nick Bosa, Bobby O'Karake, DeForest Buckner, and Ramondre Steven. This has been one of the more balanced teams across positions. Sean, round eight, who is your pick? Yeah, so I think I'm going to keep this some balanced and go IDP again. And I was looking at edge rusher, but I think just for the sake of the mock, I'm going to pivot to a safety. Um, and he's my top safety, Antoine Winfield Jr. Antoine Winfield Jr. With the linebacker core in front of him, which is, you know, old man Levante David, uh, Probably not Devin White. Those tackle opportunities are going to be there again. Yeah. 
So Winfield is a free agent as well. What's interesting is their center field, for lack of a better term, Winfield free agent, Ryan Neal, who, well, he got benched as the year progressed free agent, Devin White free agent, Levante David free agent. So if Winfield does stay, and depending on what they do with the linebacker core, could be poised for a lot of tackles and potential usage for big plays as he did again this year. Okay, and then team one, Will, with the last pick of our mock draft, that team, Christian McCaffrey, Tank Dell, James Cook, Fred Warner, T. Higgins, Alex Singleton, and Terry McLaurin. Who are you going to add to this team and round up, round out our mock draft with Will? So I, my brain would have been burned if my guy got picked right ahead of me here. You were talking defensive end, and I got really worried. Um, there's one guy that's going to be a free agent this year, looking to see him rejuvenated to play with an organization that actually knows how to function. I am going to draft Brian Burns. Brian Burns. It was close. I almost did it to you. Oh, I'm so glad you did. (laughs) He was was the guy. (laughs) I've been prepping that statement the whole round. (laughs) (laughs) Brian Burns, currently the Panthers, also a free agent. I'd be surprised if they let him go, particularly after the whole situation where the Rams offered him all kind of draft picks and they passed on that, but you never know with that owner in that organization. So it'd be real interesting to see what happens with Burns. Okay. So that concludes our eight rounds of the mock draft. Let me recap round eight for our listening audience. And then I will start asking the questions that I mentioned earlier. So get those answers ready mm-hmm. panel. So the first four picks are round eight, Quay Walker, Will Anderson, Alvin Kamara, and Chauncey Gardner Johnson. Followed by middle four, Justin Matabuike, Jermaine Johnson, Tajay Spears, and Gerald, w- excuse me, Chris Wilkins. Gerald Wilkins was the basketball player. And wrapping it up with James Conner, Javante Williams, Antoine Will- Winfield, and Brian Burns. And a lot of people are saying, who in the heck is Gerald Wilkins? Okay, I am really showing my age here. Um, okay, with that, we will go into a few questions and we are going to jump around a little bit. Let's go ahead and start with JJ on this one. JJ. Who was your favorite pick out of any of your players on your teams? Who was your favorite pick? My picks? uh, My favorite pick that I made uh, would probably be Montez Sweat. I like where I got him. I mean, seventh round. I think that's a great place for uh, him to fall. And I would snatch him up there all day, every day. Montez Sweat in the seventh round of this scoring system is a phenomenal value. Great call, JJ. Okay, Will, same question for you. Who was your favorite pick of your team? Um, man, I I think it, it's probably going to be Brian Burns, my last pick. Um, I think that's just such solid value for, for a guy that really has top five potential to finish out the year. So, Okay, let's go over to Johnny. Johnny, if you had to do one pick over from your teams, do you have a do-over that you you would redo? That's a lot of do's. Uh, I don't think I have a redo. <laughs> One that I potentially see a flaw with is I could see with Jaden Reed, you know, maybe Christian Watson is real, you know, and, and there are hesitations of can they get one guy the ball. I don't see it. I don't like Watson. I think Jaden Reed's great. You know, I, I, that's what I'm banking on. Um, but to say he's a full-fledged wide receiver one and expect that, I think that's a little bit much. So, I'm interested to see how it goes. Hopefully he gets better. I think he only gets better there um, with his second year, but I, I, I don't think it's a money in the bank. You know, I think it's a little bit risk still. Yeah. JJ, I saw a kind of facial reaction there. Um, you you, you want to add some, add some thoughts to that comment there? I, I was just agreeing with what he said. Uh, I don't, I don't like Christian Watson at all. Uh, I think he's a slightly more talented Stephen Hill. And I, I know that's probably a hot take, but um I don't like him. I think Jaden Reed's better. I think Romeo Dobbs is better. So, yeah. Is Jaden Reed more than just a slot receiver? Just a. Just a. What the hell's wrong with slot receivers? (laughs) As long as you're receiving, baby. Yeah, that's the same man that just said that that picked Tank Dell and said he was the number one wide receiver in Houston. Interesting. (laughs) 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 <laughs> okay, 
So, uh, Joe, uh, we think we know who your redo pick would have been with the Aaron Jones and Tony Pollard swap that we talked about earlier. Um, are there any others that you'd say, hmm, maybe there's a potential other do over there? Um, yeah, I think the Logan Wilson one, seeing now that Zaire Franklin's still out there, is makes that interesting, but still don't hate that pick. Other ones for mine, um, that was a Wyoming no homer I, pick. Was that what that was, Joe? Uh, partially, but also do think he's a very good play. Um, with no chance I'd swap the Garrett Wilson pick, but I was hoping. Um, I was hoping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, aside from that, I feel okay about most of my early round ones. Maybe a Brandon Ayuk over a Nico Collins or Jalen Waddle also in that territory over Nico, but. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good deal. All right. So I have one more question for Sean, then I'm going to come back and ask everyone, who's your favorite team that wasn't yours? So get, get start studying that as I asked Sean this last question. Sean, the Geritol team, <clears throat> as you step back and look at it now, how do you feel about that? Particularly given this is redraft, how do you feel about this team? Yeah, for the most part, that's, that's a really solid team. Uh, it probably lacks some big play uh, overall. But as far as, you know, just being having a consistent scoring team, I think it's right there with any of them. Okay. All right. Great. And there, you do have a good argument for that, particularly in redraft. Okay. So let's go back to Will. Will, of the teams you did not draft, which team do you like the most? And is there one thing in particular that sets it apart? So there's there's two teams that I was between going into the eighth round. Um, it was team five and team six. And it just kind of was going to depend on what those last picks went with. Team six, I was really worried about their running back situation, having only Brees Hall. Um, and so that pick of Tajay Spears there at, with that last pick really, to me, set team six ahead of everybody else. I think that's my favorite team. You've got a solid linebacker in Spillane, really solid defensive lineman, awesome wide receiver core. And two, one strong running back and one high upside running back. I really like that setup. Okay, thank you, Will. So one one vote for Sean's team six, Johnny. Oh, yeah, I think you're, you're on mute, Johnny. Thank you. So I have two teams I'll compare and then give my my final answer. But I really like three and seven, kind of like giving a take like Will over there. Two teams, um, three and seven. I really like what. Team three did with the running backs there. I think Javante Williams was my favorite pick that wasn't mine of the whole draft. Great value that late. Um, I think I I like the defense more in in team three than in, in seven, although I, I am really high on Ernest Jones. I do like him a lot. Um, uh, to me, I'm going to say team seven. I, I like the really the top three picks, St. Brown, Alave, and, and Garrett Wilson. I think that puts it over the top. So my, for me, my vote's team seven. Okay, thank you. JJ. Uh, I was torn between six, seven, and 10. Six and seven are getting a lot of shout outs. I do like team 10. I'm a little concerned about the age, obviously. Um, I, Man, it's tough for me. I'm going to lean. I'm going to lean six. When they added Tajay Spears to that roster, like with Brees and Puka and Waddle, like Metcalf, that, that's a good solid team, man. Um, for both redraft and dynasty. So yeah, I'm going to go with Sean and team six only because Joe took Garrett Wilson from okay. me and caused me to draft Josh <laughs> Allen and a whole spiraling into depression. So yeah, I'm going with Sean. Sorry, Joe. That's fair. I accept. I, I have to admit after, after the um, tirade, maybe that's a little bit strong. I was going to be shocked if you landed with Team Seven there. Okay, <laughs> go. <laughs> so I am between Team Six and Twelve. Um, six for all the reasons that has been said, but to change it up a bit, I'm going to talk about to you. Goodness, Team Twelve. Really, a lot of it is Dynasty Brain, most likely probably for both those teams. But as JJ said, always there. So. Like Jameer Gibbs, Rashad White, and Josh Jacobs, that's massive floor and upside in the running back room. The wide receivers do scare me a bit with Rice and Reed just kind of being hit or miss, but 
expect some more consistency there. Um, and if the Cardinals take a tackle, as I projected, instead of Marvin Harrison or Malik Neighbors, I think that's really good for Trey McBride. Could keep him as the number one target. Hopefully they would get another number two, but I think that's a very upside team. It's a very fun team. Okay. Thank you, Joe, with Team 12. And then Sean. Yeah, so I'm between Team 5 and 11, and I'm leaning towards Johnny's Team 5. Uh, I like the balance of both the positions, you know, as far as the draft itself goes and as far as age goes. Like, there's there's a fair mix of younger guys and, you know, some older guys there, too. Uh, and there's some explosiveness there. Uh, it probably is a little risky on a couple of picks just based on maybe some injury and size issues. But uh, I'm really digging Johnny's Team 5. Okay, great. Well... Uh, lots, lots of great teams, and and what this is showing is there's lots of great ways to build and approach building a team, particularly a team that can uh, win in this um, King's Classic Dick Butkus Division draft. Except eight. But <clears throat> I did not say that, JJ, for the record. I just want to be clear on that. <laughs> I was looking away. It sure sounded like you. <laughs> It was macaroni and cheese for the record that said that. But uh, and I picked your team six. <clears throat> oh, at two, Brute, <laughs> at two. <laughs> well, with that, we will bring this um, mock draft to a close. I first want to begin by thanking um, our esteemed colleagues here that joined for the draft. You all did a phenomenal job. Thank you very much for um, the great drafting and the great fun and entertainment we, we had. Thank you to the audience who joined us. We'll be doing many more of these mock drafts as we've talked about. We're going to be we're going to be moving into rookie mocks after this one. That'll that'll be mock draft number four. We're going to move into rookies, but we're also going to be doing other redraft, another dynasty as the offseason progresses. And we will do a combination of offense and IDP and offense and IDP and a little bit of everything there. So please please join us for those. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do so. Reminder, as I talked about a little bit earlier, with the with the code mock draft, get one month of IDP guys for a dollar. Great bargain, great opportunity to see what we have to offer. And with that, we will call it a wrap. Wishing you all great health and happiness. Be nice to one another, and we'll see you for our next mock draft Monday. Take care, everyone. Thank you for watching this IDP guys video. If you like this content and you want more fantasy football content, click here. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos to help you master your IDP league, click here to subscribe.